We're going to kick off tonight with a quite an interesting trading technique. Uh, those of you who are fully familiar with moving averages, you might recognize one or two of the elements. Um, but here's something which uh, you might find useful. Trading with the multiple moving average. And this technique uh, was really invented by an Australian trader called Guppy. And uh, he calls these now the, uh, the Guppy multiple moving averages. So we'll just stick to the MMA. Okay, we're going to look at uh, Goldman Sachs here for the purposes of this example. Uh, as you can see, uh, just a, an ordinary uh, price chart. And here we are with a 20-day and a 50-day moving average plotted over that. Now, the thing about the, the, the... Just remove the price series for a moment. Now, from this, we don't really get a lot of information, not really, about what's, what's happening to this chart because um, we have a crossover... And uh, really, when, when we see a crossover in a chart, there's, there's two pieces of information we can get from that. First of all, it's a potential change of trend. It's not always a change of trend because um, you can see here we've had um, other crossovers. The trend has not reversed. The other thing about a crossover, it's an agreement and value across different time frames. Now, this is very important because the stock market or any market at all is, is always in a state of chaos. Because any market really is an agreement on price but a disagreement in value. And if that wasn't the case, there'd be no market because why would you buy something that's fairly valued and why would somebody sell you the same thing? So when we see an agreement on price and value, volatility drops off. Very soon after that, there's going to be something happening because the market doesn't like it. it. It's not natural for the market to be in a state of equilibrium. And with this technique, we can spot where moments of equilibrium have happened or are happening and allow us to uh, hopefully trade it. Okay, now going back to the Goldman Sachs chart, instead of just plotting two moving averages, what we're doing here... We're plotting two bands of moving averages. Let's get rid of the price. We've got a slow set of moving averages here, which tend to let us know what's happening on the larger time frame. And the, this, uh, this band here tracks the movement of the large investors. And no trend will stay in place unless it's got a buy-in from big money. So these red bands here, we're looking at longer-term trends. The shorter term bands here in blue, they're traders and they're people who are getting in and out of the market quickly and as you can see here, we've, we've got a, a trend in place here and you can see how the traders are driving the price up and down. Now here for uh, anybody who's uh, interested in the, uh, how, how these are put together, it's pretty simple really. For the uh, short term band, we've got a 3, 5, 7, 10, 12 and 15 moving average. And really it's uh, three weeks and three half weeks. And for the longer term band, uh, we've got 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 and 60. Now the interesting thing about this system is that it's almost counterintuitive that we can be using 50 and 60 period moving averages to trade with because you'd assume that there'd be quite a lag before we were able to uh, get any useful information out of a moving average of, uh, of 50 periods. Now to trade with the MMA bands, what we're looking for is two main things. We're looking for separation and compression in the short term group of averages, i.e. What, what the traders are doing, what the investors are doing, and then finally, we're looking at the degree of separation between the two groups. Because when you've got a healthy uh, tr trend in action, you've got the two groups pretty much separated, as we'll see. Compression. As we were discussing earlier, it's an agreement about price and value. And it's always temporary. And the uh, compression of crossover in a long-term group confirms the trend. So what we're looking for really is we're looking for compression and a crossover in the uh, long-term band. Separation. The wider the separation within the groups, the stronger the trend. And if you think about it, it, it actually makes sense intuitively because generally if you've got a, 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 a trend which is actually starting to go parabolic, the moving average is starting to spread. So we want, mo we want the, the, uh, the bands to have a good, solid spread. 
Also, as we mentioned, strong terms are supported, strong trends are supported by long term investors. So that's the red bands. And what we're looking for is a situation where the short term band crosses the long term band and it's a heads up that the trend is over. Not always, but very often it's the case. And if you think of the long term band as being a wall, the, the short term uh, band will try to break through it and it'll find a lot of resistance very often as long as the trend stays in place. Now, an example of this, back to Goldman Sachs again. As you can see here, the, uh, this is the, these are the traders, and you can generally get a, a rough idea of what's happening here in the, uh, in the short term. And you can see here we've got a pullback, 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 and so on, until we get a, a turnover at the top. Now, on its own, the trader's band doesn't give us that much information, not really. But you see, when we add the long-term investors, do you see how the strong trend forms, gives us very strong support here in this rising trend? And when we get a turnover at the top, do you see here how this compression here, from the compression, there's always a good solid move away from it? And the interesting uh, parts of the, uh, the, what we're actually looking for with this technique is a situation here Given that these moving average is uh, the shortest one is three days and the longest one is 60, can you see here how there's um, a, an equilibrium where all the moving averages have come together it, it, almost it, within um, two or three bars of each other? And very typically, after you see this, you're going to get an explosive move. And uh, there's another one up here. So it doesn't happen very often on the chart, as you can see, but in these two cases, after that, we had a trend change and a good, strong move away from, uh, from that state of equilibrium. Now, uh, here, we've got an end of trend. Um, it's a penetration of the long-term group by the short-term group. And until you see this, the trend is not broken until you get a penetration of the traders through the investors. And every trend is started by the short-term traders, but it's established by the long-term traders. And this is, what we're, uh, this is what we use the technique to do, to, um, to really pinpoint when the trend is underway. Down here, none of this here is, is tradable because it's a mess. There's nothing clean. When we see compression, especially across the groups of traders and investors at the one spot, this is when we've got to start looking for a, a breakout. This is not a tradable system as such. I think this, this gives you a, a very good idea of what's happening in the market, but probably for trade entry, you'd have to use your own whatever signal it is you use, whether it's a break of a, a, a previous high or or a candlestick pattern or something like that. However, I would just say that when you've got the pullbacks here that do not penetrate the long-term um, band, I'd say these, this is tradable here if you get a signal. And uh, here, is, is a, this would be a very good um, example of actually getting into a trend on a pullback. And getting into the trend, I would suggest, if you've got a, a break of the, um, of the last um, short-term high, which I would define as uh, five, um, five bars with, um, with a high in the center. That's, that's how I would define a swing high, or a swing, or a swing low, so obviously the other way. Now we're just um, putting on the price uh, over the top. You can see really that um, the, the signals really are not bad at all, because um, down here, if we were looking at this spot to potentially enter a trade, we're into the trend quite early on. And um, here, you can see here that if you were trading the price action, this uh, movement down here might well be enough to take you out of a trade if you were, if you, if you were in it for the long term. But I suggest um, with this strategy, forget about the uh, price, uh, price bars altogether and uh, just look at it like this. And what, what a lot of people do is actually plot that underneath the price chart as a separate indicator. And that's, uh, that's um, another way of, of using this. Um, okay, we've talked about this before. And um, what we'll do now, we'll just zoom into this area here. And you can see here, it's, it's, um, you can see better how this is just so compressed here. The, the, um, the long-term trend has reached a state of equilibrium. And it's not until we get a compression and a break through the, the long-term band that gives us this, what, what actually turns out to be quite an explosive breakout.
And once again, as I mentioned, it's when you get um, temporary stability in the market that you know that there's um, volatility about to occur. And uh, just once again, plotting the price uh, bars over the top, um, it's, it's, even if you traded this as a signal, it's really not too shabby because you're probably in the trade by this bar here. Now, our guidelines for trading this, it's, um, we're, we're looking for a situation where both the traders and the investors' bands are narrowing. And when they converge, prepare for an explosive move. Trade in the uh, direction of the crossover, that's almost obvious. Long-term band confirms the trend direction. Watch for contractions of the short-term bands if you want to get into trades and pullbacks. Okay, intraday trading. I wanted to keep this short, so I've just got one uh, example. Here's the cable from one day last week. I think it's last Wednesday. And this, is a, this will be... Um, it's very easy to look back on this and, okay, we can see it's a downtrend. But that would be a difficult trend to stay in if you're actually day trading this. Do you see how much clearer this becomes? Because when you've got the noise out of the way, you can see here that, the, that the, once the trend has been established, the short-term band doesn't even uh, intrude into the uh, long-term band at all. I mean, not even here. And uh, just about here, and the trend breaks really here. So even for intraday trading, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good indication. It's a way of staying in the trend without being distracted by the noise of the bars. Almost plotting the, uh, plotting the price uh, bars on top of this almost destroys it, in my opinion. So that's it. It was just a quickie, really, because um, I like this technique, because um, it, it just plotted at the bottom of your chart. It really does uh, make it very, very clear when a strong trend is in progress, because actually detecting trends while they're happening is actually notoriously difficult. But I'd say this is, um, is, a, is a tool you could consider using.